All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with some huge news out of one championship. So the Singapore-based MMA promotion has announced that it is going to make history again by hold, being the first major MMA promotion to hold an all-women's event. Now, this was first reported via Mark Raimondi of ESPN over on Twitter. That's at M-A-R-C underscore R-A-I-M-O-N. D-I, Mark Raimondi. Um, but I will go ahead and read from the press release over on 1FC.com here. It says, One championship will make history once again when the promotion holds its first all-female card, One Empower, on Friday, 28 May. This unique card is scheduled to feature an exciting world title main event and the complete opening round of the biggest women's mixed martial arts tournament in history. And then it goes on to detail all the individual fights, which I'm gonna go into individually. Um, so I won't finish reading that article. But obviously, this is big news, okay? You're getting the opening round, the quarterfinals, of the one atom weight, you know, 115 pound Grand Prix. But you're also getting title fight headliner and it's a darn good one but let's get down into the Adam Wake Grand Prix before I get to that headliner so first up and I'm gonna go off of these um, from topology instead of the picture here but you can go ahead and check out that photo I posted of the brackets because I don't know how if these are going to work as actual brackets or if they're going to redraw them uh, after the first round, but hopefully they go with the brackets. I think they're good brackets. Anyway, let's get started with the first bout, and I think this is going to be the closest bout of the four. Of course, we're talking about 115 pounds. We're talking Itsuki Harata versus Elise Anderson. Strongheart fighter coming in at 4-0. and oh. Little Savage Anderson coming in at 5-1. and one. Harata most recently defeated Miku Nakamura via TKO due to ground and pound just two weeks ago. Lise Anderson hasn't fought in a while, coming off a split decision win over Katie Soul and in Invicta a year and seven months ago. Anderson is the elder fighter, 26 years to Harata's 21. She will be the taller fighter as well, 5 feet, 5 inches, 165 centimeters to Harata's 5 feet, 2 inches, 150 seven centimeters. Anderson will have the reach advantage as well at 66 inches, 168 centimeters to Harata's 62.6 inch, 159 centimeters. Now, as I said, I think this is going to be the closest fight. The experience level is roughly the same, um, but you know, there are some things that make it interesting. Obviously the height and reach of Elise Anderson. She, I believe, if I remember correctly, I noted in a previous video that she's the tallest fighter in the tournament. That height and reach is going to give some fighters some problems. Um, on the ground, I feel is where this fight gets really interesting because Harata is a ground specialist. She likes to get into the clinch, uh, get, get that judo toss or the judo trip, get you down into the um, a scarf hold, and work submissions or ground and pound from there. But Anderson is no slouch on the ground either. She has a flying triangle submission win. Uh, on the feet, I give a slight advantage to Anderson, but if it gets to the clinch or to the ground, I feel like this fight could easily go either way. Like I said, I think this is the closest uh, stylistically and you know, experience-wise of the four first round quarterfinal bouts. Moving along, we have Meng Bo taking on Ritu, the Indian Tigress Foget. Uh, Meng Bo coming in 17 and 5, Foget coming in at 4 and 0. Oh. Um, Meng most recently defeated Samara Santos via decision and won a month and a half ago. Foget most recently uh, defeated Joe Marie Torres via TKO with some elbows from the crucifix three months ago. Uh, Fogat's the elder fighter, 27 years to 25 for Mung. A little surprising, given the experience factor in favor of Mung. 
One will be the taller fighter, 5 feet 4 inch, 162 centimeters. Two Fogets, 5 feet 1 inch, 156 centimeters. I don't have a reach for Foget. Mungbo is listed at 64.6 inches, 164 centimeters. So I automatically see that people are counting out Ritu Foget based on the experience factor and the striking factor and the knockout power of Mungbo. And you know what? I understand that view. What I will say, though, is that Mungbo, after her recent fight, which was much, much closer than anyone expected it to be, Mungbo came out and said after that fight, you know, obviously I have some work to do with my ground game. Well, here you have Ritu Foget, who is a, you know, uh, Commonwealth Games medalist wrestler. Uh, I think she's been to the World Championships. I can't remember all of her wrestling credentials, but she is a strong wrestler, very aggressive, with strong ground and pound. So it's not as one-sided as everyone wants to make it out to be. Do I still favor Mung Bo? Yes. But Fogat has been working a lot on her stand-up, and she showed it. I, she's starting to you know, really use her striking against her opponents, for at least for a little bit. One thing I will say, though, is that she is still lacking in the transition stage. For example, her last fight against Torres, she completely stopped striking for a couple seconds before going for the takedown that she used to win. So she's got to work on those transitions more. Um, I still favor Mung Bo, but I think Fogut can at least make it a little bit interesting. Then we have the rematch between Aliona Rasohina and Stamp Fairtex. Rasohina coming in 13 and 4, Fairtex coming in 5 and 1. Obviously, both of them are coming off the first fight between the two uh, just over a month ago with Rasohina winning via submission within the closing seconds of the bout. Fairtex was ahead as well and was likely going to win that decision. So, one championship said, you know, Fairtex wanted the rematch. A lot of people were calling for it. One championship. Um, decided to, you know, give some uh, some fan service there and said, well, we'll make it in the first round. I was thinking maybe they'll, won't make it in the first round, make things really interesting. But they decided, well, we'll play the fan service and give it to them in the first round. So, Rasohina, the elder fighter, 30 years, just shy of uh, 31 years, to Fair Texas 23. No reach available. They are the same height, 5 feet 2 inches, 157 centimeters. This fight could go either way, just like the last one. You know, I said it leading up to that, the first fight, that Rasohina was on paper Fairtex's toughest test to date, and I think she showed it to be in real life as well, not just on paper. Rasohina took it to her standing, and Rasohina took a tour on the ground and hunted for submissions when the fight went to the ground. I mean, Stamp was ahead. I had Stamp ahead at the end of the fight, going towards the end of the fight, but it was by no means a blowout. Um, Rasohina was doing surprisingly well in striking. She really had improved on it from the last time I saw her fight. Um, Veritex was having a hard time dealing with her boxing and the uh, range. Rasohina used a really good control of the range in that bout. So this fight could easily go either way again. I'm not mad that they, you know, decided to do the fan service and make this rematch in the first round. I thought it would have been interesting had they not made it in the first round, but they decided to go ahead and do that. Moving on to the final quarterfinal bout. Sahi Ham taking on Denise the Menace Zamboanga. Ham coming in 23 and 8. Zamboanga coming in 8-0. and Hom most recently fought a year and two months ago against Ayaka Hamasaki, winning via split decision and taking the number one atom weight uh, spot in the world. Zamboanga most recently uh, defeated debutante Watsapinya Kayukong, defeating her via Americana submission. But before that, she had the biggest win of her career, just over a year ago, defeating Mei Yamaguchi in a fight that Yamaguchi was heavily favored to win. 
Um, is the elder fighter, 34 to 24 for Zamboanga. They are the same height, 5 feet 2 inches, 158 centimeters. No reach available for Zamboanga. Hom is listed at 62 inches, 157 centimeters. Obviously, everyone is heavily favoring the former Ryzen, former Road FC champ, Hom, to win this one. She has the experience factor. She's one of the best strikers in the women's divisions. She's beaten a who's who of women's Adam Waite. And, of, of course, has that win over Ayaka Hamasaki in their trilogy fight. She lost the first two, but she won that trilogy fight. And she's riding a six-fight win streak with four of those wins coming by finish. Zamboanga, though, she's no slouch. She's got some uh, wins by finish herself couple of decisions. The only, honestly, actually, well, let's be honest here. She has three decisions, and two of them were against the only real step-ups in her career in Gian Radzlin and Mei Yamaguchi. But still, nobody was expecting her to beat Mei Yamaguchi. That really came out of nowhere. She, I will say, though, one thing that helped her growth a lot was she was working with the Fairtex Gym. She's no longer training there. She's back in the Philippines. So, I mean, who knows if she'll be able to keep up with the top tier training there. I don't know. Sahi Hom, obviously she's training with the same gym she's trained at for the majority of her career at this point. Team Mad in Pusan, South Korea. One thing she will be missing though, leading up to this fight, is her lead training partner and sparring partner, Shiyu Park. Shiyu Park is over in, in Japan right now. She's staying there because she's participating in the Deep Jewels Adam Weight Grand Prix, and the semifinals and finals take place in May, which this fight also takes place in May. And now this takes place at the end of May. The Deep Jewels finals are in beginning of May, but still, Park will not be able to train with Hom at all because once she goes back to Japan, she has to do the COVID uh, quarantine thing. She won't be able to train with Hom at all. So Hom will be without her lead sparring partner into the, coming into this fight. So she's coming in a bit of disadvantage as well. But I don't think this will be an absolute blow up for Hom. And Zambawanga, she surprised us before. I mean, my personal pick early is Hom. It's hard to pick against her, especially for me. She's my favorite women's MMA fighter. So I kind of have to agree with everyone picking Hom as the early favorite, not just to win the quarterfinals, but the whole tournament. So finally, we move to the main event of this one, what do they call it? Empower card. A straw weight, one, excuse me, one straw weight, 125 pound championship. Defending champ, the Panda, Seong Jin Nan taking on Michelle Nicolini. Seong coming in 15 and two, Nicolini coming in at six and two. Both are coming in off of wins preceded by losses for Seong. It's a win over Tiffany Teo via decision four months ago, preceded by a loss to Angela Lee a year and four months ago. Nicolini, has not fought in quite a while. A year and seven months ago, she defeated Angela Lee via decision. Before that was her loss to Tiffany Teo via decision. That was two years, four months ago. So Nicolini's coming in us off of a long layoff, even longer. I mean, Sion had one bout in recent memory, but Nicolini's coming in with a long layoff. Nicolini coming in, the elder fighter, and I did not know she was this old. 39 years young, taking on Seong, who is 33. Um, they are the same height, 5 feet 5 inch, 165 centimeters. No reach available for either of them. This one gets interesting. Okay, on the stand-up, you got to give it to Seong. Her boxing is where is her moneymaker. That is where she does the most damage. That is where she gets the most work done. I mean, both times she fought Tiffany Teo, Tiffany Teo left looking like an alien, basically. I mean, 
Siong hits hard and does damage. Throws some looping punches, but those punches are accurate and they hurt. Nicolini, on the other hand, jujitsu whiz, pro. I forget all of her accolades, but if it goes to the ground, Siong is going to be fighting off submission after submission after submission from Nicolini. This is going to be a darn good fight. I'm really looking forward to it. One interesting factor, though. Last I checked, they were both Evolve MMA fighters training out of the Evolve MMA gym in Singapore. I mean, they both lived and trained there. See, all more recently than Nicolini, but... Yeah, they both trained there. Now, maybe Nicolini went home to Brazil to train. I, maybe they're still going to both train at Evolve and... Just train different sections on different days. I, I don't don't know how they're going to work this out because Nicolini has been with Evolve for a while. Siong more recently, ever since the loss to Angela Lee, decided to change it up. That to me is the most interesting because who's gonna do their most training? Who's gonna do their training where? And if it's at the same gym, how are they gonna work it out and avoid each other? Because Singapore's small country. Very small country. It's basically just a city. It's going to be hard for them to avoid tra <laughs> avoid each other if they're both training in the same gym. That, to me, is the real X factor that makes this fight interesting. So there you have it. The fight card for One Empower goes down May 28th in Singapore. Pfft, mind blown here. Salute to one championship. Hats off to one. Did not expect it to be an all-female event. They have now become the first major MMA promotion. I don't mean like, you know, the regional promotions or anything. They're like the first big show MMA promotion to pull off an all women's event. Did not expect this out of one championship. Hats off to one. Um, you got the Adam Weight 115 pound quarterfinals for that Grand Prix that is going to be super exciting. Oh, I'm back in action. I'm, I'm excited for that. But then you got Siong versus Nicolini. That was the fight to make at that weight class for one. So I'm glad it's getting done. Oh man, four tournament bouts and a championship bout all in one fight, or excuse me, one fight card. I'm, my adrenaline is running. I haven't had a drop of caffeine in hours, and yet this, this news that I got after I woke up from a nap just has me thrilled, excited. It's 20 minutes till 1 a.m. here. And I don't know how I'm going to get to bed after recording this. I'm just that excited about this. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this card in the comments down below. And if you like the video, please give it a like. Share it as well. Help the channel grow. While you're at it, if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMMA Scene Now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.